Broadcasting the boisterous part of the fastest game in the world. So strap on your lids and lace them up, Rook. You're listening to the Barn Chirpers Hockey Podcast. Take a lap. Woo. Clap it up, boys. Clap it up. Welcome to another episode of the Barn Chirpers. Of course, you can follow us and tweet at, or not tweet, <laughs> we don't do that, but you can chirp at us <laughs> on the Instagram at Barn Chirpers Pod and on the threads at Barn Chirpers Pod. We have a lot to cover today. We got a sweater game to play. We got a whole bunch of news and notes from around the league. We're going to do a little power rankings today and then some more news and notes uh, in the empty net. A lot to get to. First thing, Captain, uh, this is some news out of, uh, so Bauer, a popular brand in the hockey world, they have introduced the quote unquote rookie skaters, uh, which will be adjustable skates for kids to essentially start to learn the game. You know, uh, if you've never played the game of hockey uh, or been a parent with a kid in hockey, hockey equipment is expensive. And when you're growing up, obviously you grow. So I know my ma had to pay <laughs> and get me brand new goalie gear every single year because of how much I grew. So she spent a lot of dough. So Bauer has introduced these adjustable skates, uh, which will essentially buy you between two and three years is kind of what they're projecting uh, for kids uh, and their skates. So I think that's a pretty cool deal. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago we had mentioned that Gretzky uh, uh, and – shoot, I'm forgetting who he paired up with, but that they were working on a, a, a CCM to uh, get a stick deal, essentially three sticks for 50 bucks. So I love to see uh, the hockey world uh, doing their part to get more eyes essentially on the product really and get more more kids involved in the game with uh, affordable gear. Yeah, well, you know, how do you how do you grow the game? It's it starts with the youth. Like if you, we've gone to uh, a couple games now with my son Liam, and while he's shown no interest in playing the game, uh, he has shown a great deal of interest in hockey just in general, just by going. So I can only imagine, you know, much like with with football and youth football, youth baseball, youth soccer is huge in in our country, but youth hockey not so much. Uh, how do you how do you lower that bar of entry, make it affordable. And uh, I love this. I, I think the, these two notes, you know, the, a couple weeks back with Gretzky and the sticks and, and now here with skates, this is huge. And um, this has the potential of, of really opening up hockey supposed to be for everyone. So let's start with the youth and uh, the, I love it, man. I can't say any more than that. I love it. I think this is, this is a big deal. I like that a lot. I agree. And so I would love for the other big uh, companies to get on board with other things too. Again, I already mentioned CCM uh, and Gretzky is pairing up with, with the sticks, but I mean, there's a lot of other um, equipment companies uh, that, that could do something as well, especially for goalies too. Cause them goalie pads are expensive. Ask my mom, like I said, uh, <laughs> but anyway, moving on, we, like I said, we are going to play the sweater game. Uh, I have just got five sweaters in the mail. So I'm super excited. Uh, the one that I'm wearing today, Justin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one I'm wearing today, I'm going to give you a couple of hints because unless you remember a couple years ago from the gear freaks, uh, podcast, or maybe it was grease pole that we did. Uh, I had mentioned this sweater or I had talked sort of about it, but, um, so you probably may or may not remember that, but so your two hints, uh, it is not a current player. It's from mm. me growing up, right? That time frame. Uh, and they played for the following teams, not in any particular order. They played for Dallas. They played for Calgary. They played for Detroit. They played for the Phoenix Coyotes. And they played for the St. Louis Blues. So those, those are your two hints. Let's begin the sweater game. Again, Justin has three questions that he can ask me, and I will give him a hot or a cold answer to get him to figure out uh, what the sweater is. Yeah. Your time starts now. Uh, is it out west? Yes, it is in the okay. Western Conference. 
All right, Western Conference team. Oh, uh, is it hot? Uh, you're uh, uh, you're yeah, warm. You're warm. Okay, is it attendee? Forgot my own game. <laughs> cold, ice cold. Oh, okay. Uh, so not attendee. Last question. Dang, uh, is it a forward? Hot. Okay, so it's a forward in the Western Conference. Dang, I wish I didn't miss mess that uh, second question up. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a wild stab in the You're dark. You're never going to get it. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark, a forward from uh, the Western Conference, Paul Correa. Ooh, that would be a good one, but no. It is not Paul Correa from the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, it is not that throwback, but it is a throwback, Justin. So uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question because uh, our next thing that we're going to get into is the power rankings. So uh, waste some time while I put the sweater on. <laughs> Wait some time. So if we're doing power rankings next, hockey ha has been upside down and more specifically the uh the metro who both of our our uh clubs are in the metro i said the metro is in shambles because the metro seems to lose to the phoenix or to the oh there we go there we go the st louis blues who do ah uh, brett hull i the never would have got that brett hull, the old brett hull st louis blues the <laughs> I got the I tag like on there those... too. Uh, <laughs> the uh, yeah, so this was a uh, a sweater that I had when I was a kid. I didn't have the name on it, but it was this uh, version of the St. Louis Blues from the late '90s or early '97-ish nine, when I got the that sweater. So uh, this is one that's been on my bucket list for a long time. So I wanted to. Start with this guy uh, as the throwback one that I got. We got four more weeks of sweaters. <laughs> Do a sweater, sweater game for. <laughs> so I was saying, as as you're putting your uh, sweet Brett Hall sweater on, that um the Metro is in shambles, which you disagreed upon. But I I wanted to point out that the San Jose Sharks seems to own the Metro right now. Almost everybody has lost except for the Rangers who gave them a fight the other the other or a couple nights ago. Yeah, and I mean uh <laughs> funny enough, the uh the Sharks actually have a five, four, and one record over the last ten. So they're a five hundred team over the last ten. Uh and uh, Thomas Hurdle and Anthony Duclair are on the top 10 of scorers over the last week too. So what? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> and to kind of go back to your first point, when you said the Metro's in shambles, um, yeah, I don't necessarily think that it's in shambles, but it's definitely like upside down world for sure. Um, but I don't necessarily know if it's in shambles, but I think that still remains to be seen. Um so I guess to, to kind of get into this, uh, get your first line out there, Captain. If we're going to do a top five power rankings, who's going to be your, your number five of best team right now? Power rankings across the NFL. Uh, I think I'm going to put them here. I want them to be higher. They took the L last night to my boys, uh, the Vancouver Canucks, um, who are, they seem to be cooling down. They're coming back down to earth. Uh, but they are still they're putting up points last night they they almost stole that one from us uh they they tied it up in the third period of five five I thought for sure that we were going to give up an uh give up a six goal before the uh, end of the third period but I, I again I wish they could be higher because they played so well this season but um taking that l to my lowly New Jersey Devils last night kind of knocks them back a peg uh vancouver canucks how about you joe uh so i actually have vancouver as my number one spot in the power rankings and you know while their last 
10, they are four and six. So they have definitely fallen back uh, over the last 10, but I still don't think that, you know, it's, it's kind of that, obviously not the midpoint of the season, but hot, we've been doing really well. Uh, you kind of falter a little bit and and they'll figure it out. Um, and so they're my number one in the power rankings. And uh, they just traded for, remember, they got rid of Anthony Beauvillier and sent him over to Chicago. In return, they get Nikita Zadorov, big daddy zaddy uh, from the Calgary Flood. They cleared up that cap room and they sent that pick that they just got from Chicago back over to Calgary to get Nikita Zadorov uh, on the Vancouver Canucks. So one interesting thing about this, the Canucks, and the reason why I have them in my number one power rankings, they have, and I'll have to, I'd have to research this a little bit more, but all six of, of their D-men are over six feet, four inches tall and over 220 pounds. They have a meaty blue line and that blue line defense and goaltending that's going to win you a championship. So that's why they're my number one in the power rankings. I think, I, I think it's just proximity losing to the devils right now. just seems like a huge L. So. Understandable. Yeah. I mean, uh, as we know, the, uh, the devs have uh, been struggling a little bit. I am. So who do you have at, at five then, Joe? So my number five is actually the Boston Bruins. Um, over the last 10, they're six, three, and one. Uh, I don't think that they're falling out of a playoff spot. I don't think that they're falling out of the, uh, uh, owning the Atlantic. Uh, I just think right now they're in that kind of same spot that we just talked talked about with Vancouver. They're kind of in that spot where they're coming back down to earth a little bit and they kind of have to refine their game again. Uh, but they're still in that top you know, top five power rankings, best teams in the league. Again, I don't think that they're losing the Atlantic by any means. Uh, just right now, I have them lower than the four other teams that I have in the power rankings. How about you? Who's number five? Or number so, uh, number four, actually, for you. Number four would be the Boston Bruins for, this, for the same reasons. They've, they've kind of come, come down to earth a little bit. Um, you know, we still haven't seen the surfacing – you know, of them losing so many players, like it hasn't really shown its ugly head yet. Uh, so that could still be in the works for them. Um, but they're just, they've just cooled off a little bit and, uh, you know, just enough to be number four on, on my rankings. Um, but my number three, God, I hate having them even here <laughs> in the top five at all, but the New York Rangers, um, I could have made a case for them to be number one, but they're the Rangers and I hate their guts, but, um, they, they're doing what you're supposed to do. You go out they're They're the one team in the Metro that is just going out and winning hockey games. And by any means necessary, you know, uh, you know, the sharks put up five on them that they went goal for goal with them. But other than that, like they're just winning hockey games. However, however you can do it. So the New York Rangers, I had them at, at number three. So uh, who was your number four? Uh, so who was your number four? Because it, it broke up a little bit on, on my uh, internet here. Who did you have it for? Four was the Bruins. Okay. Oh, you had the Bruins at four. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so my number four, I have the Vegas Golden Knights at number four on my power rankings. They are four, two, and four over the last ten kind of the same thing as Boston. I don't know that they're going to lose the Pacific. I mean, Vancouver is definitely on their heels. Um, I think Vegas is just kind of in that lull period, figuring out their game again. Uh, Aiden Hill is out um, for at least a week or two. Um, so that could definitely cause a little bit more problems, but I have four, the Vegas golden Knights. And it's funny that you mentioned the rags at three. Cause I also have the Rangers at number three. Um, I mean, they, they've been on a tear. They're the best team in the Metro argue, arguably the best team in the East right now at seven and three mm -hmm. over the last 10 um, Breadman is shooting more and he's scoring more. He's usually a pass first type guy. He's score. He's a uh, shooting more this year and he's scoring too. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's uh, probably might, 
may or may not come up in our uh, three stars of the week this week. And it does pain me a little bit too, Justin. I don't really like to give the Rangers any love, but uh, I also have the Rangers at uh, number three in power rankings. So that leaves who is your number two. And we already know who my number one is. Who would be your number one? So my number two would be the Vegas Golden Knights again for for all the same reasons and it's and, until they do until they like just stink and are officially eliminated I'm going to continue to pour love on them because they're the defending champs and they made me look stupid a lot last season so until yes. until they're out <laughs> they're very going to be very high on my list um, accurate. And number one on my list is the Colorado Avalanche. Um, mm. You know, it's 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 been you know they haven't had like soaring heights but they also haven't had you know like just terrible outings so to me they they've been pretty consistent this year and uh they're scoring points um mckinnon putting the team on his back when when needed uh georgiev again he was one of our top stars last week you know he decided he was going to play out of his mind last week so it, it, again, it's, it's just one of those things where you, you just got to give a little love to uh, to Colorado. So I have Colorado at number one. So who was your yeah, number that's two? Uh, just touching on your your pick for number one being the Colorado Avalanche. They're six two and two over their last ten, and I feel like over the last couple weeks um, we've been we've been talking about the Colorado Avalanche. So they've just steadily stayed right there as one of the best teams in the West uh, without really getting a lot of love, truly, because we always talk about Vancouver. We always talk about the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, we've talked about the Avs a little bit, but uh, they're kind of quietly sitting around in the East there owning it really, uh, if you look at their their record comparably. So um, that's a solid pick for those power rankings. My number two, uh, again, I really wish I didn't talk about this team because obviously we know uh, who I love so much on the LA Kings being number two uh, for me in the power rankings. But they're seven, two, and one over their last 10. Um, Anzi Kopitar, he just passed Marcel Dion as an all-time assist leader for the LA team, uh, LA Kings franchise at 758 assists. Not only that, they just won last night again on the road and they set a record for the season opening road win streak at 10. So the LA Kings are flying, Justin, uh, and I kind of hate it, but um, man, Cam Talbot's playing out of his mind. Um, Anzi Kopitar's playing like he did 10 years ago. Uh, same thing with Adrian Kempe too and oh wait yeah this is a superstar check-in actually justin this is a <laughs> superstar check-in hey remember that contract we uh the la king spent over eight million dollars on uh, a guy named wow. pierre luke dubois dubois well guess what in his last game so last night <clears throat> pierre luke dubois dubois played 16 minutes time on ice he had <laughs> two shots on goal uh he had 10 percent face-off percentage 10%. He was the worst face-off guy in the entire game, not just for the LA team, but the entire game at 10%. And then I dug a little bit deeper and he isn't even in the top 25 of the league for winning face-offs so far this year. Not even that, Justin, he's not even in the top 50 of winning face-offs this year. And he gets paid well over $8 million. You know who is in the top uh, five of winning faceoffs, a guy who also is a third line, I think a third line center, but either way, Nico Strum for the San Jose Sharks is number two at winning faceoffs, right under, you guessed it, the man, the myth, the legend. You thought I was going to say Sidney Crosby, but it's Vincent Trocek is number one so far in the league right now for winning faceoffs. Nico Strum of the San Jose Sharks, who is the second worst team in the league, is better at faceoffs than Pierre Luc Dubois. And I guarantee you, I don't have his contract in front of me, but I guarantee you, Nico Strum doesn't get paid eight and a half million dollars. And the last yeah. thing that I'm going to chirp Pierre Luc Dubois about is okay, so maybe you're not putting up a whole lot of points. Maybe you're not winning a whole lot of faceoffs. You must be blocking a lot of shots, right, Justin? Mm. Nope. He only has 18 blocks this year so far in 25 games. Uh, okay, well, maybe he's he's probably hitting a lot, though, I bet. Right, Justin? Nope. 
He's not. He only has, uh, let's see, 12 hits on the year. So he's not blocking shots. He's not throwing hits. He's not winning faceoffs. He's not scoring goals. He's not getting assists. He's not getting any points. What is he doing? And why is he worth 800 or excuse me, $8.5 million? Hmm. Well, he's not. That's the answer. I hope he hears this because I would love to get him on the show and I'd love to say it to his face that you are mediocre at best, bud. Anyway. We were texting uh, back, the, back and forth. The, <laughs> we were texting about this a, a couple days ago. And, you know, again, you, I'm, I'm with you. I hate giving a little love to the Kings, but like it really brings me joy that they are playing so well and he has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I don't know why, yeah, but it makes me so true. happy. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Yeah, exactly. The only bad thing about it that they're they're doing well despite him being mediocre at best is that he's probably just going to continue to stick around LA because they don't really need to get rid of him because everybody else is producing. You know what I mean? So it, 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 I hate it because he essentially is going to keep a spot in the NHL for being mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if these are, Uh, but so on the, Go for it, buddy. You were thinking the same thing I was. I was going to say, if if these are the the best teams, then obviously we have to kind of swing to who are the worst teams in the league. And I'm going to jokingly put this to you be, or uh, to me before I point the real answers to you. Uh, New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey are the five answers for the worst teams in in the league this year. Who's the real number five worst team in the league to you, Joe? Well, and uh, for everybody who is in a little bit of the know, we're not going to say the Columbus Blue Jackets or the San Jose Sharks or even the Anaheim Ducks because those are kind of giveaways. Um, mm-hmm. But so my, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm not going to go the very, I'm not going to go 32nd. I'm going to go 29th here first. I think the New York Islanders are one of the worst bottom ranking teams right now in the NHL. While, Essentially, they're playing 500 hockey over the last 10, so 5-4-1. and one. But they just blew an overtime lead to the San Jose Sharks last night. Not only that, they have blown 11 third-period leads and, and lost those 11 games. Uh, in I don't have the exact number of games they've played right now in front of me. I think they've played 24 games. But they've lost almost half their games from blowing leads. This team again, we've talked about how boring they are to watch, how boring their play is. Something needs to change in, in the aisle if if they're going to do anything. Uh, this team, to me, is, is on the bottom of the pack. I don't have them on my list at all, but they should. Because if, if you remember back to our New York Islanders discussion um, preseason, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt because of Ilya Sorokin. And... You look at so I can name three three losses right off the top of the dome. Six five last night. I don't know who was in net. I assume it was Sorokin, but uh six five last night to uh to San Jose, where they gave up the lead. Um, and two overtime losses five to four against my New Jersey Devils. Um that's 16 goals by my man Ilya Sorokin in three games against uh, you know, I mean, sure the devs have a high octane offense but they haven't been able to get it done. And then against the Sharks, nobody's calling them high octane, even though, again, the last three games, they're looking that way. Um, Yeah, man, like if Sorkin's the only thing they have and he's not being able, he's not shutting people down, then what do the aisle have? So I don't have them on my list, but I could put them right there with, I don't have New Jersey for real, but like I could put New Jersey there at five with New York with my actual number five. No, I feel that for sure. Um, And again, I have no allegiance to the New York Islanders. I mean, it just kind of gave me an ick feeling, but it's crazy to me that Lou Lamorello is still around one of the longest tenured uh, GMs in the league. And literally he's just, 
he essentially still has a job because of his success that he had for your guys, New Jersey back in the day. But there is mm-hmm. no reason this guy should still be a GM. He's 81 years old. He he has no idea what's going on in the hockey world. Come on. He's 81, dude. You, you have no gra- grasp on what is happening in 2023. Get somebody else out of there, and maybe this team could be exciting to watch. Again, I have no allegiance to the New York Islanders. I really don't care. But – as a fan, if there's a game that I would – if, if say, the Caps play the Islanders, I'm not going to watch that game because I don't want to watch it. If there's – if the Kraken play the Islanders, I'm not going to watch it because it's so boring. So boring. Mm. Uh, anyway, moving on. Um, so this one – this team is 6-4 and four over their last 10. But I tell you what, it has been such a struggle for this team – I don't think that they're going to get out of this hole. The next team in the bottom of the power rankings for me, unfortunately, is the Ottawa Senators. And I hate to say it, but they're in the bottom of the barrel. And I don't see, like, I don't even see a light at the end of the tunnel for this team. It has been such a struggle for them. I don't see how it's going to get any better. I've got them at at my number two worst team. They're just, it just, they're not getting it done. And you look at that roster and it seems like they should be able to do things. And again, like you mentioned, they, they kind of turned it around, but it, the hole seems to be too big for them to be able to dig out of it. And, you know, you sent a text the other night, you're officially worried about Ottawa. And it's like, it's true. It, 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 it's, this has to be coaching or, or GM related. Like, like, again, you look at the talent, you're getting nothing out of this this talent. You have a good lineup of of guys on the ice. How are you not winning games? So that's either system, or that's uh, that's you know, to me that's just chemistry and system. So to me that says head coaching, but uh, it could also be GM. So. Yeah, and and what surprises me the most about the Ottawa Senators, so they're dead last in the Atlantic right now. They have a plus five goal differential, so technically they would be the fourth spot in the in the Atlantic amongst it would be Boston, Detroit, Florida, Ottawa, and then Toronto as far as uh, positive goal differentials. But they're eighth in the Atlantic, so they just can't get it done. To me, like you said, that's a. I think DJ Smith has done a pretty good job over his tenure but we talked about this last week this is like your sixth year bud get get somebody new in there like it's obviously not uh it's not going well for you so um and to that same point ottawa is dead last in the eastern conference right now something's got to change yeah it seems like it it should be coaching so um who's your next one justin so i didn't mention them my real number five uh is the buffalo sabers um, y- y- yep. you hate to say it because, but mm. again, to me, it's interchangeable. It could be Buffalo, it could be the Isle, it could be the Devils here at at five. But um, all three of those teams are doing the same thing essentially, except for the Isle kind of have tenure. Uh, you can forgive it in New Jersey and Buffalo, sort of, because New Jersey's young, Buffalo's young, but um this should have been the year for Buffalo. Like they, they should have ascended. They, they should be in, and technically they're not eliminated yet. They should be in the conversation for, for playoffs. They should be in conversation looking at, you know, a higher rank in playoffs, but they're just middling and they're losing a lot of games that they should probably be winning. Again, they've lost twice to my New Jersey devils. Like, what is that saying? Like the devils have not looked like they've hardly played any complete games this season. So it's, you know, what are they doing out there? And the, the goalie situation, uh, Levy went back down to the AHL. So you've got 6K and Comrie split in time. And neither of them is really getting it done. The Ford's not producing. T- Alex Tuck just went on the IR. So it's, it's just a mess right there in Buffalo right now. So I have Buffalo at number five. Yeah, I mean, so Buffalo is is number three, or excuse me, number four worst uh, for me. Or excuse me, I guess it would be because bottom. So technically they're number two for me, second worst in the, in the bottom for me. Uh, three, six, and one over their last 10. Everything you said. Um, and I don't think anything really needs to change in Buffalo. I just think that they outperformed 
where they're actually at last year. Everybody was just kind of clicking. Uh, and then in the off season, you know, Buffalo, they, they did a great job of shoring everybody up. The core is locked in for the next seven to eight years. That's great. I love that. Um, and Levi getting sent back down, sending sent down to the AHL, I think is a good move because there's been no goalie that has gone from essentially the NCAA to the, to the, to the show and done well. Like he needs some seasoning down in the AHL. He needs to be able to get a lot of games under his belt in the AHL, not do a, a tandem split, like get the kid some reps down, down on the AHL. Um, again, I kind of the same thing that I said about Ottawa. I just don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel right now for Buffalo. And that sucks because I know I picked them high in the Atlantic and I, I picked them as a playoff team, but I'm not seeing it right now. And I mean, the boys just, the boys just got to get it going. It's simple as that. I don't think there needs to be a change, not the GM, not, not the coach. I think Don Granado has done a great job in Buffalo. The boys just, the boys just got to figure it out and start performing and working together because they're they're just not doing it right now. So at my number four, right here on the sweater, you see the crest. Yep. The Seattle Kraken. Again, somebody that we both picked really high. And, you know, technically speaking, I th think they're at like 22 points or something, you know, like 500 team. But they should be better than that. Um, and whereas they were one of my favorite teams to watch last year, I can't stand watching the Seattle crack and play hockey this year. That's a bummer. Like, I, I feel like I lost something great. Um, when I'm, when I'm wi willingly to, uh, watching Montreal Canadians games and, uh, flipping away from Seattle Kraken games, something's wrong. Um, so yeah, man, Seattle Kraken at number four for me. Yeah, I have the Seattle Kraken dead last in my power rankings right now. For everything you said, um, they are 12th out of 16 teams in the Western Conference, 22 points, 8, 12, and 6, which is terrible. Dash 22 on the goal differential. Man, I picked Philip Grubauer to have a Vesna Trophy season in our preseason predictions. Uh, right now, Gruby has five wins. 3.37 goals against average and a 0. 0.882 save percentage. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> that is utterly disgusting. And I hate it because I love the Kraken, but um, same thing. I just, they outperformed last year. I, I kind of need to retool and figure out who the Kraken are this year. Um, obviously still play hard and, you know, but I think uh, your buyers, well, excuse me, I think you might be sellers at the deadline. Um, try to get out from uh, some any any egregious contracts. I don't know that they have any. I'm not looking at cat friendly right now, but try to get some pieces. Try to get some draft picks. Um, I know that stinks, um, but I I almost again I, I'm not saying throw in the towel this year, but I don't see them as a playoff team now this year. Um, they probably are going to be at the bottom of the barrel for the rest of the year, unfortunately. But hey, there's always next year. I mean, Matty Beneers is still going to be on his entry-level contract till next year. Um, you got Jordan Eberle. Uh, you got uh, – still got Gruby. Going to have Decord. Uh, maybe Shane Wright comes back up. So – but I think this year is kind of a wash, I think. So speaking of teams that have been a favorite to watch, and we've we've kind of lambasted them a lot, at number three I got the Minnesota Wild. Um, just – I, again, they, they've kind of turned it around since the head coaching change. I feel like they're they're trending in the right direction. But is it too little, too late? Um, Kaprizov, I think, seven points, six points over the last week, you know, finally getting it going. But is it too little, too late? Both goalies, both Flower and Gus, have played really bad. Um, you know, and part of that is, I guess, the blue line in front of them, injuries in the blue line and, and people not scoring goals. But that's been a thing in Minnesota. But – uh Again, Seattle, one of my favorite teams to watch last year. Uh, Minnesota, one of my favorite teams to watch. I cannot watch a Minnesota Wild hockey game this year. It's just, it's atrocious. It's, it's boring to watch. And it's, it, they just aren't clicking on all cylinders. So I got Minnesota at number three, Joe. Yeah. So I, I actually have Minnesota too. They're right above where the aisle. So mine go uh, Minnesota. New York Islanders, Ottawa, Buffalo, and the Kraken. So uh, technically Minnesota would be number five for me. Um, yeah, I mean, they've turned it around since the coaching change. Uh, I think it's three wins in a row, and they've scored like 13 games in three – or excuse me, 
They've scored 13 goals in three games and only allowed three, which is a massive change from where they were at. Um, but comma, this is where I contradict everything I just said. Um, <laughs> I don't really believe it. I wish I did. I truly wish I did, but I don't believe it. I think you're just getting the initial jump start from having a new coach and you want to play up, uh, you know, as hard as you can, cause you have a new coach, but seeing what we saw, it's the same team. Like, yeah, there's a new voice at the head of the locker room, but I don't think this team is any different than they were the previous 20 games. So yeah, they're, they're at the bottom of my power rankings. And I, I really don't believe that it's going to change that much. Um, I would love to be wrong. Please prove me wrong, Minnesota wild. But um, yeah, man, I, I, I hate it, but I don't think they're moving out of that bottom dwelling uh, power ranking spot truly, but I wish I was wrong. So um, I did want to mention one thing right on the outskirts of the top power rankings, Justin, and I think you might too. It's our Arizona coyotes, baby. They are six, three and one over the last 10. They are right on the cusp of being in the top for the power rankings. For me, uh, we've been kind of on their bandwagon since the off season when they made all the moves. Um, number one, the Yotes have now dethroned the past five Stanley Cup champions in consecutive games. The first team to ever do that. They they beat the Vegas Golden Knights two to nothing, Tampa Bay Lightning three to one, the Avalanche four to three, the Blues four to one, and they just shut out the Washington Capitals six to nothing. They're the first team to do that. Uh, I'm here for it. I love what the Yotes are doing. And if this is just essentially like almost like a ploy, if, if management, this is like a ploy, like let's spend some money, let's get some good, good guys on this team. So that way we can get in arena in Phoenix and show that we're a competitive team. If that's all it's for. Okay. I'm here for it. I'm on the wagon. I'm, I'm hard pulling the Arizona Coyotes wagon. Cause I love to see this. Um, and to that same point, Connor Ingram has been playing out of his mind. He is the NHL's first star of the week over the last week. He has, uh, or excuse me, for the month of November, seven wins, 2.41 goals against average, a 928 save percentage, Justin. Every time Ingram is in the net, they win. And he's been pretty much having the 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 mass, the uh, biggest share of the net. Um and I'm going to send it back over to you in a second here. I do, I do really like Kirill v Vegmelka, Veggie. I think he's a great goaltender. Somehow, I think maybe the pressure is on him too much, uh, potentially, where he's just not finding his game right now. So I hope he does find his game. But in the meantime, Connor Ingram and the Arizona Coyotes, whoo, they're killing it right now. Um, any anything to say uh, to add to to that? I just want to add. And just echo your point, I'm here for it. I love that the Arizona Coyotes are kind of shutting everybody up because they were yeah. a joke last year. Yep. And well, for like the last decade at least. Yeah. And I mean, we when we went to the uh first blink show this this summer, there was like 10 solid minutes of us just joking the coyotes. And you know, like we went through their whole history of you know, since they moved to Arizona, you know they've done nothing since moving there uh i would much prefer that they actually go out put, put a solid team on the ice and prove us wrong than prove us right and continue to stink uh and yeah. still have a hockey franchise so go out there win as much as you possibly can be awesome if you could eke into the playoffs somehow and what's crazy about this team is if they somehow did eke into the playoffs i could see them winning a seven game series you know depending on who they match up with but i could see sure. them stealing a series uh you know especially if they got hot right there at the end of the season and again with ingram playing out of his mind this is a team you got to look out for and we've been saying it since you know the off season look out for the coyotes because they they're not here to play man they're i i love it i am here for it <laughs> agreed um such a young team and a couple of vets on that squad i really would have loved to see zaddy go to the yotes um i think that would have been a, a huge um upgrade but uh they're they're doing their thing right now and uh, going back to kind of rag on minnesota a little bit more i think the yotes would sweep the wild in a seven game series right now if yeah. it was wild, wild versus Yotes, they would sweep them yeah. hands down. Like yeah. no doubt about it in my mind. 
anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, man, it's uh, let's it's time to pull the goalie, don't you think? Uh, we gotta we gotta get to score some goals here. Yeah, let's do it. First thing I have for you, uh, Justin, Nino Niederreiter is extended in Winnipeg for three years by four million dollars. Good oh, yeah. uh, passer, passer shoot on that. Uh, you know what? Uh, it's it's. I know this is supposed to be like quick, but um, I'm gonna shoot. Why not? Like it seems like he may have finally landed in a place that that wants him. <laughs> like I mean, you know, he had that the the stint in Nashville. He was the dev at one point in his career, but like to see him kind of land in Winnipeg, Winnipeg overperforming. You know, we kind of had them bottom of the not bottom of the barrel, but mid middle of the West, and they're proving that hey. We, we, we made these two big signings. Uh, let's also shore up some some vets here. So, uh, you yeah, know, I'll shoot on that. Let's let's keep Nino around. Yeah, same. Uh, and just to kind of double back on that. Yeah, I mean, Winnipeg could very easily land in those power rankings as well. They've outperformed from what we thought. Um, we didn't know what Winnipeg was doing. Uh, like you said, they they signed Hellebuck, they signed Shifley, and now they signed Nino, Nino, Nino Ryder. Um, man, like they're showing that they're here to play. Like they're here to win. Now there's like, we're not guessing anymore about Winnipeg. So mm -hmm. I'm here for that. Like I, I, whether I, I, I am indifferent about a team, I love a team or hate a team. I, at the very end, just love to see what are you doing and what is this team? I, I enjoy to see that as a fan. Um, so I love that. Uh, one more pass or shoot for you here, Justin, uh, Samuel Montembaum extended in Montreal for three years by 3.15 pass or shoot Jake Allen on the trading block. Since it seems like Montembaum is the guy shoot that I'm definitely shooting like that to me that that absolutely says Allen's Allen's on the move. Uh, I mean, again, you like it. I, I like it for Montembaum because uh, he's played well enough as well as well as he can in Montreal that it's probably going to be his net. Um, I, what's, what's the backup Primo or Peugeot? I think uh, it's Primo. Yeah, Primo. Yep. Primo. So, you know, let let Primo start getting those those two A, you know, minutes. And uh, let's see where Jake Allen ends up. Maybe he ends up a devil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, same thing. Um, Jake Allen's a solid goaltender. And in Montreal right now, again, they're kind of plagued with injuries. Again, mm -hmm. Alex Newhook is now out for 10 to 12 weeks. Kirby Doc is out for the season again. Um, it, it it really sucks to, that the Canadians are dealing with injury problems again. But Jake Allen's a solid goaltender. So I feel like you could definitely get a lot of uh, return from that. Probably second round pick at least, maybe two. Um, it's definitely what Montreal uh, could use is some um, draft uh, capital, or that could also be flipped for some other trade bait. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, another piece of news here, the double I HF have deemed in their meeting that net guards will be mandatory at all levels of international play uh, starting in 2024. As we know, unfortunately um, there was, uh, you know, the, the incident on the ice that happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I, I love this, that there, we're looking at that, like, yo, we need to have net guards and um, uh, cut resistant clothing on underneath uh, to protect our players. This is a win for across, across the board for, for hockey. Agreed. Uh, player safety is supposed to be like number one priority. <laughs> and uh, I, oftentimes it seems like it's not. Um, so this was swift, you know, it, it only took a couple weeks to do it. And they said, Hey, this is what's going to happen. I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. Uh, another awesome point here, uh, at the board of governors meeting, uh, this week in Seattle, it has, uh, been clarified that the cap will raise next year from eight. 83.5 million to 87.6 million. So $4.3 million. It's a 5% increase. Um, this is on track with what the CBA currently is. Um, essentially the COVID years, players had to pay the owners back like a billion dollars or something like that. So that's why there's been a dead cap for the last couple of years. Um, so this is essentially from what I understand, the new cap being uh, 87.6 million is like, the minimum that it would be, it could still be renegotiated in the off season next year to be higher.
where we're at least getting an added four point three million dollars added to the cap next year. Dig it, <laughs> I, you know, uh, means m- more money for uh, for for movement for players, and uh, you know, man, I'm I'm here for that. Hopefully, not yeah. guys like Pierre Luc Dubois who don't deserve it, who are mediocre at best. <laughs> yeah. Or 13 mil for Austin Matthews. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not gonna there's not another superstar check-in today. I know everybody was uh clinching their clinching their fists right there for a second. Um, so I saw this quote from uh from Torts. Uh first thing I want to hit on Torts. I watched part of uh, the Philly game the other night. He was behind the bench in just a Philly uh pullover, not wearing a suit. He's just it's like a sweatsuit Torts was wearing. I I love that Torts just doesn't care. Not as he doesn't care about his team or the Flyers, but like he's essentially like, I'm not going to wear a suit. I don't want to wear a mm-hmm. suit. I'm going to wear a pullover. Tell me, tell me I'm wrong. I dare you. I, I, yeah. I love that about Torts. Um, and I saw this quote about Torts. Um, and uh, Flyers coach John Tortorella sounds off on the current state of hitting in today's game, calling the league, quote, soft, unquote, end quote, as it stands now. He says, uh, quote, our players in this league do not put enough emphasis on making sure you're protecting yourself from hits. We've kind of tried to turn this league into a soft, no hit league. Now people aren't ready to be hit. I think it's a lost art in how you take hits. Nowadays, I'm not so sure big hits are allowed because everyone puts their arms up when there's a big hit. It makes me sick what goes on in the league here on big hits. That's part of the game. I just don't think we should take the foundation of the National Hockey League out. Hits are allowed. Back in the day, and I'm not trying to go back way back, but you've got to learn how to take a hit. That's a big play in winning games is taking a hit to make a play and being braced to take these hits. And if you don't, and if you do have a big hit, you shouldn't have to fight someone two seconds later because it's a big hit. That's what I don't get. Not blaming anybody. I just don't like where that part of the game is going. That's a foundation of the National Hockey League. It's a man's game. Learn to take learn to take a hit. We've got it convoluted a little bit. End quote from John Tortorella. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I feel like you take that a little bit with uh, not necessarily a grain of salt, but like take it a, a 50-50 because I, th- I think the point that he made about players learning to take the hit is the most salient one he made. Uh, because I think you see a lot less fights over a hit if they don't look as brutal. <laughs> you know, if if you're taking the hit and it doesn't look like you just got leveled, then I, I, I think people aren't, aren't popping off, you know, for no reason. So, you know, th- the league's gotten faster uh, I think the league wants more goals scored. So like to me, there's somewhere in the middle where hitting has to has to happen because there's nothing like a good hit in hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think again, the salient to, to repeat, the salient point he made was players learning how to take the hit appropriately and players kind of shrugging that off and and moving on because it's part of the game. Yeah, I agree uh, to, to your same points. Uh, there's two instances over this last week where I totally agree with what Torch said. Uh, Rasmus Dahlin did a reverse hit on Brad Marchand, which was clean as, as all could be. And essentially, like, Dahlin had to almost uh, – there was a big scuffle after that hit. Marchand got up and, and skated away like, good hit, man. Like, that was a solid, clean hit, and he shouldn't have to fight for a solid, clean hit. Um, your boy Luke, Luke Hughes got hit the other day. Uh, on an icing play by Garnet Hathaway wasn't a dirty hit. Like essentially it seemed to me like Luke Hughes just kind of let up instead of playing until the whistle. Um, and I think to kind of go back on what Torts is saying, I think in this fast game that we, we watch now, and I do love that it's a faster game, but I, I kind of attribute it to the same as when I watch baseball and somebody just jogs their way to first base, like you're kind of half, you're half ass in it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, let's play to the whistle. Like, okay, it's icing and the hybrid icing that we have now, the refs essentially blow the whistle well before the puck actually gets to the other end. But let's play to the whistle, boys, and be ready to get hit because we're supposed to be battling for the puck. So um, I I agree with essentially the same thing that you said. Like, I take it 50-50. I don't think that – you should have to drop the gloves every time there's a hit thrown. It's a big play in the league. Uh, I also, you know, it's a faster game. So guys should be 
ready and, and learn how to take a hit too. So that's kind of where I'm at with that as well. So I think we agree. Uh, last thing, it has been official. The NHL will be holding the 2024 NHL draft at the Sphere in Las Vegas, Nevada. This will be the first sports league to hold any event in this uh, in the sphere. It's um, going to be, uh, from what I understand, the last time that they're going to do an in-person draft. It seems like they might be moving to like an online type draft like other leagues have done. So if this is the last time we're doing it, let's go all out. I just hope they get the production right to, to make it a, a big a big fight feel, if you will. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, I, I went to look up uh, some stuff about the NHL just before we went on. And one of the biggest news pieces, and even though it was in October was to your point, the decentralization um, I'm for it, man. Anything that is big and actually gets the draft, the same kind of coverage you think about, like our guy, Corey, he loves it. Like he has several times said, like it is the, the draft is like crack for him. So if we could get the NHL draft, that same kind of coverage and love I'm all for it. And if it becomes a thing, like I was seriously considering going to Nashville this earlier this year. Yeah, we talked about it. But you know, if, if it didn't come up on us so last minute, um, but shoot, can you imagine that Joe, like us going out to Vegas to the sphere for the draft? That'd be dope. I'd be into that. That'd be fun. And I think it's a perfect spot for it too. Cause Vegas is a hockey crowd now because of the night. So mm -hmm. that place would be packed out. Um, there would be so much money coming into the NHL for doing that. So props to them for doing something right. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, I chirped, uh, I chirped the NHL. Um, I don't know. If, uh, I'll bring it up here too. I'm glad that they finally did something right uh, by, by doing this. Uh, hopefully they don't do what they normally would do and ban anybody that um, supports human rights from getting into the sphere and watching the NHL draft because the NHL would probably do something like that. Seems like they would. It seems like they would. Don't, hey, uh, screw, this up. <laughs> don't screw it up, NHL. Hey, we actually have to put the goalie back in because we didn't talk about our three stars this week, Captain. Oh, oops. <laughs> we were on a roll. I, I blame myself because I'm just I'm in my Brett Hall sweater. I'm just ready to score a goal and get out of here. But um, we got to talk about three stars. Um, I would. Uh, so I'm going to mention these these couple names. Uh, at the top of the scoring list over the last week. And then I'm going to let you go ahead and, and take those, uh, those first two uh, bread, man, <sighs> man, like we talked about five goals, two assists, seven points, Jack Eichel, three goals, four assists, seven points, Jackie Hughes, three goals, four assists, seven points. Uh, also Alexander Kerfoot, one goal, six assists, seven points. They're all tied at the top of the league uh, this past week for scoring, but Justin, who is our number three and number two star of the week? So is it Fabry? Uh, yep. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, sir. Um, and I, I want to extend that out to the wings. Cause when we did the global series episode a couple weeks back, we were kind of down on the wings and they've turned it around. They've, they've started to look like they beat the living crap out of, out of the devils a couple weeks ago. Lindy said it's the worst game he's ever seen from the devs the first time the devs were shut out um i want to make this note even though he got lit up for i think four last night uh alex lyon taking some more reps in net and he's looked stellar in the net you know uh two one goal uh, one goal uh, appearances and then last night he kind of gets you know lit up but uh, a little love to the wings, specifically Fabry and uh, and uh, Alex Lyon. Yeah, um, to touch on that, Alex Lyon, he was uh, I want to say like three and one with like a one eight two goals against average before last night. So uh, good good outing before <laughs> last night. Yeah. They still they still won the game. Uh, and to that same note, uh, Showtime Patty Kane is cleared to to play. He's supposed to play Thursday, so we'll we'll see. Whoa. uh We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, our third star of the week, Robbie Fabry, four goals, two assists, six points. Uh, go ahead. Go, go ahead and give your boy some love here, Justin. Second star of the week. Uh, where are we going to Connor well, or Jackie? Uh, you go Jackie. Yeah. I, I mentioned the other guys. We know Brad's been doing good. Jack Eichel's been doing good. But we can give some love to Jackie. Let's be a little bit of homers. The devs have started started to turn it around a little bit. 
Um, I, well, and I specifically want to g- give a little love to Jackie because he can't, he just came back from injury. <laughs> like he's played like four games since injury and right back to form. You love to see it last night. Uh, he get, I think he got two assists, two apples. Um, but like just, it, it's almost like he never left. And, you know, you have the big loss to San Jose, which, by the way, you play that game again the next night and the, the devs destroy them. 48 shots on goal. Uh, Kakinen just out of his mind that night. So it it, it, it is what it is. What can you do? It but uh, is, Jackie, so. <laughs> Jackie Hughes uh, just comes back and just right back to where he was before he got injured. And uh, that's why you want to give him a little love here. Again, three goals, four assists, seven points for Jack Hughes, right back to form. I'm not sure what his uh, projected uh, season uh, projection is right now, but it's probably over 100 points, I want to say. Um, so that's uh, – hey, yeah, we're a little bit of homers. Again, we're giving props to Artemi Panarin. He's killing it with, with the Rangers, five goals, two assists, seven points. Uh, again, he's shooting more and he's scoring more. So that's very dangerous uh, for the Metro for sure. But mm-hmm. – once again, giving love, he was the first star of the month for the NHL. He's first star in our hearts, and definitely this week, Connor Ingram, Arizona Coyotes. Whew, three games played, three wins, 1.31 goals against average, 0.955 save percentage, and a shutout over the last week. First star of the week, again, in our hearts, in our minds, and in the NHL. This kid, pay him all the money. That five... Two two five million that Darcy Kemper got. <laughs> Give this kid like six million, because I tell you what, uh, he's killing it right now. And the Yotes, like we said, are uh, at the top of or uh, are, are killing it on the uh, power rankings as well. Um, so yeah, Connor Ingham, first first star of the week. Our, I our love this year. Third goalie, third goalie now. Yeah, I know. Again, we're we're goalie pod, and uh, the goalies don't show up on our three stars that much, but. As is, as is noted, when they show up, they show out. So. They show up big time. That's right. Uh, so that'll do it for this week. Uh, man, I ran up against the hour again. We knew it was going to be a big show. Uh, yeah. But again, tune in again next week. There will be another sweater game next week and see if Justin can get it get it right <laughs> uh, next week. At Barn Troopers Pod on the Instagram and the threads and anywhere you listen to podcasts, like, subscribe. We would appreciate that. And a five star. Until next time, y'all have a great one. Take care and stick taps and sellies, boys. Clap it up. Yeah.